I, I, sh I should mention this. Um, I, I've I've been having some doctor issues too. That's even more fun. One of the things they discovered, um, when you have a, uh, I have a vitamin D deficiency, and there is a scale of uh, a met. They measure how much vitamin D is in, is in your system. Redheads are actually more efficient at absorbing vitamin D. There is a the, the normal the, the optimum range for a human being of the scale is sixty. That's where you should be. Most people are around a forty. It's not that bad, but you know it should be better. But most people sit around a forty. I'm at a nine. Ooh, nine yeah. is way less than sixty. Yeah, like I was never good at math, but yeah, that's. Less than. Less than. So among my many other issues, I'm taking these. I can only take this pill once a week as a vitamin D supplement, plus other daily vitamin D supplements. Because what is I this? Mean, the other thing is you could hang out out in the sun. So I'm taking these pills. <laughs> um, yeah, this the is. The reason redheads burn is that genetically we absorb vitamin D very, very well. Yeah, this is so vitamin. Well that we catch fire. This is, uh, these, these pills are like two, th the regular over the counter. These are like 2,000 units of vitamin D every day. This you is 50,000. Wow. Yeah. They are not screwing around. Well, nine. <laughs> Among my many other breakages and failures, yes. I'm out of warranty, Tara. Is it possible your vitamin D is so low it's hurting your internet connection? No. <laughs> no. Just throwing that out there. Maybe it's like an extremist thing? No. So all my cats are currently fascinated because we filled the bird feeders. And even though we have a squirrel feeder that is separate for the squirrels filled with squirrel food, and we laced all the bird seed with chili powder, which doesn't hurt anybody, but squirrels are supposed to not like. Right. They don't give a f YouTube. They're all up in that YouTube. We have the most morbidly obese squirrels. <laughs> like we have these fat little f YouTube. <laughs> just running around like little psychopaths going after all the food they're going after an empty feeder like we have one feeder that's empty because we ran out of seed and they're trying to climb a flowering bush that's not even a tree to get to the empty feeder but they're bending the bush because they're so youtube fat. <laughs> <laughs> so my cats are all sitting in the windows fascinated at the fat squirrel circus happening in the backyard right now uh. so they'll probably be without their services today <laughs> all right Let's get the intro rolling. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring you back here for a little segment we like to call, What the Fuck is Wrong With You? And uh, where do we start this week? Um, Start with the Rollins quote. Remember, Henry Rollins, a lot of cool spoken words, you should listen to him sometime, he's, he's neat. I love Henry Rollins. He, he talked about once, um, after a party, the worst thing he ever wanted to be called was amazing. Because if someone came up to him and said, dude, you were amazing last night, then he knows he did something horrific and just possibly illegal. Oh, okay. Because I use that word a lot and I'm like, oh my God, I don't want to offend Henry Rollins. Dude, you were amazing last night, and your tree, and your car is up in a tree. Or this—that's that, why I'm bringing it up. This lady, she was amazing. Tell us the police: woman arrested for DUI after driving on rim. Margarita found in cup holder. Hi, say hi. Oh, <laughs> was that hi or please put me down? I think that was probably, please put me down. Oh! <laughs> you just try to smack me in the face? That's not nice. <laughs> All right, bye-bye. <laughs> Police have arrested a woman after she was allegedly driving drunk on the rim of her vehicle. And you got to see this shit. Look at this picture. 
Uh, according to Tulsa police, officers were conducting a traffic stop when they spied it, spotted a driver driving on a rim. Police say they quickly ended the original traffic stop and pulled over the driver, which they say they could hear coming from a block away. Officers asked the woman, later identified as Amy Dillon, how much she had to drink, in which she replied she had two tequila shots. Police say she could barely stand upright. Did not do well on a field sobriety test. They also found a full margarita inside her cup holder. Well, that's super not legal. Look at her, though. She's definitely like... Yeah, hi, everybody. Like, is she actually wearing a polo? <laughs> she is like 100% Vineyard Vines bitch right now. <laughs> I'm just having a marg while I drive to brunch. Oh my god, I love those shoes. They're so cute. They look at the front of her fucking car. Wow. There, yeah, is, bad. there is a story there. Cause not only is the rubber on the tire missing, parts of the car are missing too. Yeah. Probably from the friction induced sparks and heat. And general... Just... That is... Yikes. My god, dude. How did... I... That is... No one... When no one stops you is the worst thing, you know? When your friends let you do this shit. I know. What happened here? Because they, because your friends let you do it because you're entertaining them. Yeah. They're not thinking about, oh, no, maybe we should help out. They're like, this is going to be funny. Or your friends hate you. Yeah. There's that, too. And they're like, whatever. That bitch has it coming. <laughs> oh, my God. And now, like, I drove a mile in traffic with a, with a flat tire because there was literally nowhere to pull over. And I had no less than three people honk at me and go, your tire's <laughs> flat. Like, I don't fucking know. Nobody, nobody, nobody. Never. nobody. I was doing five miles an hour in bumper to bumper traffic and people had to tell me my tire was flat. People were trying to probably go in. Ah, and she was going, woo! Woo! Right. Yeah, that's probably true. Yeah. My God. The, the, oh, oh, this is a DUI second offense. Oh, okay. Did they try and take her tires the first time? No driver's license in possession while driving. Yeah, I feel like anybody could do that if you forget your wallet or something. Forget your wallet, forget your tire, you know. Bring, you, put, you remember the margarita. Remember the margarita. <laughs> priorities, man. Oh, hey, speaking of priorities, um, work sucks. I know this. We all, we all have to go to work sometimes. I Even this is work. I have to do this shit. You have to work. Everyone has to work, and it sucks. And I so mean, currently, I'm professionally nice to cats, so it's not so bad for me these days. But sometimes your coworkers, especially in retail, God, I hate retail, especially in retail, sometimes your coworkers are dicks. Awful. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Retail and customer service. That's the two, two, yeah. Um, there are lots of ways to handle that. There's HR, there's even gentle confrontation. This, however, is not how you handle dickish coworkers. 19-year-old Enterprise employees spiked co-workers water with LSD. Wow. Oh, son. Oh, I'm kind of sad I didn't think of that. Arnold, Missouri. Uh, Arnold police are investigating an unusual incident that occurred at the Enterprise Rent-A-Car. According to Lieutenant Clinton Woolridge, uh, Wooldridge, sorry. Two employees became dizzy and shaky and didn't know why. Workers were taken to an urgent care center. Wooldridge said officers questioned a 19-year-old male employee and he admitted putting LSD in the water bottles of two co-workers and a third employee's coffee cup. Police say the man told them he did this because his fellow employees had, quote, negative energy. <laughs> 
Now, okay, I've never done LSD. But it's considered a downer, right? Well, it's it's a hallucinogen. It's a hallucinogen. But apparently... uh it mix inc- that with coffee. Apparently it has increased heart rate, temperature, and high blood okay, pressure. so it's an upper. All right. Yeah, but... And increased blood pressure. Did you, that's one of those things you need to ask somebody. Are you taking any medication? Yeah, because that'll fuck your shit up. Oh, man. yes, it will. Negative energy? Like, I'm sorry they were harsh in your buzz, bro. <laughs> but life is hard. You don't just get to... Ra- okay, you need to take it down a notch. I'm going to dose you. Have Have a nice day. It would be a lot nicer in the world if you could do that shit. If somebody was I mean, just raging out and you could trank them. One of the girls I used to work with, who was very, very sweet, used to carry that rescue remedy stuff. Oh, God, yes. And when everybody was having a bad day, she'd be like, okay, who needs a drop? And drop us all on our tongue. But we agreed to that. And it was just like herbal calming stuff. Like she wasn't putting acid in, our, in my Pepsi. No, man, I mean, like, I've, I, you've ever had somebody in line in front of you just raging out at the fucking cashier and shit? I'd be like, I just, like, get a little train gun. I'm like, boop, okay, you should, you take a nap. We'll come back to you later. I legitimately would love to be able to do that. We call it the timeout gun. Yeah. You need a little timeout. I would not be able to be trusted with a <laughs> Because I, I would be first person shooter on that shit. Just all day. <laughs> oh, good. What the? F- but like, imagine you're fucking tripping balls at the Enterprise rent a car. Like, that Ford Focus just came alive. <laughs> it's going to eat you. Hey, I don't. You don't want to rent that one because it tells lies. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, can you imagine being a customer that day? <laughs> How much is this going to cost me? Um, a smile. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, I buddy. I have to ask the turtle because he's in charge of our promotions. Hey, do you like what? Five of these? I have too many. Here, have all the keys. Just take them with. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my God, my fingers are keys. <laughs> Oh my god. That's super not safe, but it also, if if everybody agreed to it in advance, sounds like a pretty great day at work. This was not, though. This was No. Don't do you this can't shit. Just dose people, that's wrong. Consent is very important in our society. Also, like you said, like drug interactions a thing. Oh. You could kill somebody. Oh, we got more work related shenanigans. Um Oh, God, have you ever done fast food? Kind of. I worked in, like, an independently owned car hop type place that did ice cream and burgers. And Closest I ever got was a grocery store back in high school. But, uh... And they- I did Starbucks. Fast food, especially... Fast food is one of those situations where it just sort of starts feeling like hell after a little while. And I can, yeah. un- I can understand you be like, you know what? I need to change my position in life, even if it's only a lateral move. Even if I'm going from fast food to retail. I need some. I need to get out of this. At least I won't smell like X all the time. Right. Because like, that- smelling like coffee all the time got a little old. And it doesn't wash out. Well, this guy, instead of, you know, taking his destiny in his own hands... He uh, handed it over to 911. Florida man calls 911 with elaborate story of robbery to get out of work. Oh, look at his sad little face. <laughs> Dundee, Florida. Florida man has been arrested after he reportedly called 911 and claimed he was robbed, all so that he could get out of going to work for the day. Brian Anderson, 32, called 911 to report an armed robbery. 911 dispatchers that two unknown suspects carrying a gun stole money, his necklace, and his phone from him. He went on to say the suspects threw his phone on the ground. Threw it on the ground! <laughs> I'm an adult! 
and proceeded to jump into a black Ford Crown Victoria and drive away. That is detailed. When they arrived at the scene, deputies figured out the robbery never actually happened, and Anderson confessed that he made up the story. He told them he didn't want to show up for his 11 a.m. shift at Hardee's, where he works. My car broke down. I'm sick. Have to go to the doctor. Yeah. Shit, if my, you go to the doctor, they'll give you a note. My second cousin died. Even, I, I'll note this, even if they don't, even if you don't have shit, the doctor will give you a fucking note. They'll give you a reason not to, because you're paying them. They'll give you a fucking say, note. I just saw a story that there's some, like, major... It's food service, too, that is no longer accepting doctor's notes as an excuse for absence. Like, they don't care if you're sick, which is terrible in because food service. food, yeah. But, late-stage capitalism... Polk County Sheriff's Office said, on the bright side, Brian didn't have to go to his 11 a shift, the half shift at the restaurant. <laughs> Anderson was arrested and charged with misuse of 911 and knowingly giving false information to law enforcement. I hope you like your new job stamping license plates, Brian. No customers. There's, you know what, there, there are so many ways out of this, including two magic words, I quit. Yeah. I know. I've faked a migraine a time or two to get out of my shift mm. somewhere I hated. We all do it. Everybody's done it. I didn't fake a robbery, though. No. No. That's... I didn't fake a felony. Because, <laughs> like, they can't prove I didn't have a migraine that day. Ain't nobody showing up at my house with a CAT scan. Mm. They can prove you weren't robbed. Now, I, I, yeah, I know it. I mean, for one thing, it's Hardee's. I can understand it. But so you just say, I quit. And you find something else. Because yeah. if you're that miserable doing it today, you're going to be that miserable doing it tomorrow and a month from now. And Generally, I would recommend find something else, then say, I quit. Usually, yeah. But even if you can't, even if you just but can't, what? if you just, if you can't, just can't, can't take it anymore. Take it anymore. Just. Don't call 911. I mean, at least he didn't call 911 and say he didn't want to go to work today. <laughs> That's not how that works. It doesn't grant wishes. Right, but I, I'm waiting for the day that happens. People called 911 because Facebook was down. <laughs> like, at least he had the decency to make up an emergency. Uh, moving on to Pennsylvania. I don't, I don't even know... I, this is, this is one of the damn stupidest things we've had in just straight up stupid. Oh my God. Lit candle inside a vehicle causes fire. Lancaster County. A vehicle is a total loss after a fire broke out in, that was started by a woman who lit a candle inside her car. Is this an Amish drive-by? Because it's Lancaster, PA. Is that how the Amish do drive-bys? Do they just throw a lit candle in your window as they buggy by? <laughs> You're picturing it. <laughs> Jebediah says hello. <laughs> <laughs> they're, bu they're playing Weird Al. <laughs> oh. Amish paradise. Police and fire personnel responded to the parking lot. Upon arrival, police found the vehicle owner on scene. She told police she had lit a candle in her vehicle, which accidentally caught another object on fire. The vehicle owner said the flame spread too fast to be put out. She was able to escape the vehicle without injury. Fire crew say will put the fire to control within minutes. The vehicle is a total loss. Lit. Do not set fires in your car. Why would you do that? Why would you? You can't drive around with your Yankee candle. They literally, Yankee candle makes car air fresheners. Yeah, you don't need, don't try to. a whole other product for that. She's got a big ass cookie dough motherfucker on the dashboard. I'm like, no. Like, no. Or were you just trying to hold a vigil? Like, what, what were you doing? Was it your birthday? And you just couldn't wait? Like, 
Why? There's a particular reason you don't put fire inside a car. And I say this as an ex-smoker, too. Yeah. But, well, even in there is flammable. What? Everything in there is flammable. I mean, even then, you have the, the cigarette lighter, which is just a heated coil of metal. Right. It's not... It's not an open flame. Because everything in there is flammable. Yep. And it's powered by a tank of gasoline. <laughs> That's not safe. Don't why what what were you doing trying to create ambiance <laughs> in the car? There is nothing, even a nice candle that will make fucking in your car sexy. I fucking any fucking in your car is always a desperate move. That's why it's mostly yo know, teenagers and shit because they don't have rooms of their own. They, but the candle's not going to help, man. The candle's not going to help. No. It's not going to stop the steering wheel from digging into your back. No. Oh, good God. Yeah, Just, that's not safe. Well, here's another one. Oh, okay. This, I... I, I got to give this next guy, at least he didn't involve some... Yeah, at least he... He, he he picked his opponent without with the least amount of harm. Man arrested for fighting with himself, pulling down his pants at South at South Jersey Wawa. Jersey woo! Little, little Egg Harbor Township, New Jersey. South Jersey man was arrested Tuesday after police said he was quote fighting with himself and exposed his genitals in a Little Egg Harbor Township Wawa. Witnesses say 37-year-old Jason Kramer was under the influence of something. After speaking with him, Kramer was sent on his way and said he made arrangements for transportation home. About 15 minutes later, police were called back to the Wawa. After witnesses say Kramer began fighting with himself out front of the store, reportedly punching himself in the face and scratching his eyes. Somebody saw Fight Club. One too many times. Oh, people are going to join in any minute. Just got to keep this. Somebody's going to come over real curious and then we'll off to the races. No problem. I think I lost a tooth. Shit. And then you take your dick out. Because, you know, why not? <laughs> Several witnesses told police that Kramer pulled out his pants, exposed and grabbed his genitals and began yelling obscenities at customers. Kramer was arrested, sure. charged with lewdness. He was released and transported home pending a future court date. I mean, Wawa's are classy establishments, okay? Yes. Like, I didn't really understand until I moved to Jersey how much Jersey people worship Wawa. And they like, we do, have one, yeah. like a block away. It's the only thing in this town that's open after 9 p.m. So it's pretty important around here. Hmm. And they have pretty good sandwiches. Like, it's a nice place. But, like, it's not it's not a shitty little, like, gas and sip. Like, most of them are pretty nice. Yeah. They don't need your crap, man. <laughs> don't. What the fuck were you on, man? <laughs> That's not a fun drug. No. Ugh. Was that your was that your vitamin D? No, that was my headache medicine. Oh. I guess this I guess these stories are not agreeing with me. But uh what the fuck drugs are you on? Those are bad drugs. Yeah, you shouldn't do those drugs anymore. Those are not good drugs. You should just go inside, get yourself a sizzly, maybe a hoagie. Punching yourself, yanking your dick, and screaming at strangers is not a good drug. No, that's no way to go through life, son. <laughs> that's like, no one no, no one goes up to a drug dealer and says, Hey, you got something that's going to make me punch myself, grab my dick, and scream at strangers. No one asks for that. That's not, a, that, that's not something they put on the menu. No one wants that. And if they do ask for that, don't sell to them, because they're already crazy. I mean, that's like a salami and jelly sandwich. Nobody orders that. Nobody fucking orders that. I used to eat peanut butter and bologna when I was a kid.
when I, but you know, I don't now. I, I don't, kids eat weird shit, man. You didn't eat weird shit when you were a kid. I also eat dry cat food. <laughs> kids eat weird shit. Okay. The problem in the channel is like, whatever happened to cocaine? I know. <laughs> shit was so simple then. Whatever happened, they're trying to legalize weed in New Jersey. Just hold out for the weed, man. Then you're going to fucking love Wawa. <laughs> Pretty much no matter what you want to eat, they have it. Uh, final story this week. A completely different kind of Brexit. Here we go. Britain arrested after fleeing Australia on jet ski armed with crossbow. Okay. A wanted British man has attempted to flee Australia on a jet ski, traveling almost 93 miles across the Torres Strait while armed with a crossbow. The 57-year-old man is subject to an outstanding warrant for drug-related charges in Western Australia. The man almost made it to uh, Sabai Island? Saibai Island? Uh... S-A-I-B-A-I. That says Saibai to me, but... Or Sabai. Six. Yeah, I don't know. Um, which is part of Australia. Uh, four, four kilometers south of Papua New Guinea. He was arrested on the mudflats of the eastern side of the island. Locals alerted police in uh, Bamaga? 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 We're trying to pronounce words. At the tip of Cape York in far north Queensland... That a man, possibly armed with a crossbow and carrying additional flu fuel and supplies, had been seen launching a jet ski. Oh my god, the cop's name. Jock O'Keefe. That's so fucking Australian. It's a you bit unusual to try and get from Ponzan Bay all the way to PNG. He stuck out like the proverbial, said O'Keefe. Jock like, O'Keefe. Like the proverbial what? Just Usually a noun comes after that, jock. O'Keefe confirmed the man was facing serious drug charges in Western Australia. You know what? You're 57... You know Australia is not actually a penal colony anymore, right? No, no. If I get to 57 years old and I find myself in the middle of the ocean between Australia and an island... On drug charges, carrying a crossbow, at 57. That's kind of my best life right there. Do you think so? Think about that. It's a story you can write home about. From prison? Shit, you could get that plea, you could plea that shit down and you got a novel out of that fuck. I don't even, I don't know what prison's like in Australia. Maybe it's great. You got a... They probably don't give you machetes for the giant spiders, though. You get, you got a novel, you got a book deal out of this shit. Come on, man, that's just fantastic. <laughs> I, mean, I, I guess. I don't know what you were doing with a crossbow on a jet ski, though. Well, it's because you can't, uh, in, in Australia, guns are regulated. Yeah. Dun, that's dun, dun, dun. So you get a crossbow. Which, you know, okay. Like, all right, Katniss, good luck. <laughs> Just, can you imagine? No, no, no. All of you sitting out there, think about approaching your 60s. Think about where you want to be and what you want to be doing. Now, if I gave you the option to be running from the authorities on a jet ski, off the coast of Australia, armed with a sh with, with a crossbow. Would you necessarily immediately turn me down? Yes, because you know how many sharks are there. You're, <laughs> going, to die. <laughs> you're going to be something's lunch. No, but you you're going to die shiny and chrome on the Fury Road is what you're going to do. Steve Irwin got killed by one of the most docile animals in the ocean off the coast of Australia. You can't trust the nature there. Uh, fuck no! I want to be somewhere comfortable and boring. Fuck no! Fuck no! 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 
Dude, I suggested you go outside to get more vitamin D and you shook your bottle of pills at me. <laughs> Don't act like you're Johnny Adventurer. Johnny Adventurer? Yeah. Really? That was the best you could come up with? No. Not even Evil Knievel. That one just popped out right at the top of my head. Johnny Adventurer. And nobody in the channel knows who the fuck Evil Knievel is. Nobody watching this on YouTube knows who... They were like, who is that? Is he a demon? <laughs> was he... Was, Wait, is he an anime? Is a romance album? Because <laughs> I heard they're getting back together. Uh, who's jingling around back there? Oh, hi, Simba. Yes. Simba, everybody. Hey, Simba. I guess the first thing we learned this week is uh, everyone's ideal of a best life is different, I suppose. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, uh, I, mad props to this guy, man. That's like, goddamn. On a jet ski with a crossbow. Um. Now the whole chat is scrolling with everyone saying they know who Evil Knievel is. <laughs> We're very proud of you. Um, we've learned that any drug that has you punching yourself is not a good drug. You should refrain from that drug. At least, like, not at the Wawa. Not... That's that's not a fun drug. We've learned don't Take say... Away. We've learned don't set things in your car on fire. Okay. Even candles. It's yeah. not the olden times. You don't need to light a candle. You've got an overhead your light. Your car has lights. They're built in. Just open the door. They turn on. Or, you know, there's probably a button right above your head. We've learned that uh, sometimes it's better to quit a job than fake a robbery to get out of working a shift. In fact, yeah. every time it's better to quit every a job. Time. Every time. Every time. Um, we've learned consent is very important. Especially, especially where acid is concerned. Yeah, especially we're talking about LSD. Mind-altering substances are best enjoyed consensually. And finally, we've learned... Some, if you get drunk enough and stubborn enough, anything is possible. Even I think that's true. Driving down the road on your rim... And I got it. I got it. Enough tequila, all things are possible. Look at this fucking mugshot just one more time. She's so fucking pleased with herself. Woo! She's about to talk to their manager. 